Hey, what's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie review, this time for the long-awaited, the long-talked-about online, Long Legs. Now, this film is out now as of July 12, 2024, and it is written and directed by Oz Perkins, who also did direct some films such as The Black Coat's Daughter and Gretel and Hansel. Two films that I have not seen, so I can't really compare and contrast what's going on with that and Long Legs. But I am here to give you guys my honest and genuine review on Long Legs once again. A movie that has been talked about and circulated online so much before its initial release. I think mainly because there's a lot of Nick Cage fans out there. So before we get into it, guys, if you do want to support the channel and support cinephiles alike, please hit that big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel today, where I do more reviews like this, movie reactions, and live streams here on the channel. Now this film Long Legs is rated R. It has a runtime of one hour and 41 minutes and the quick synopsis for the film is. In pursuit of a serial killer, an FBI agent uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end his terrifying killing spree. All right, so let's get into this cast, starting with Meka Monroe, our leading lady, our leading investigator, our leading head figure that's on the posters, that's all over the trailer. I really only know Meka Monroe from films like It Follows, watcher and maybe it's because she is such a young actress i expected maybe a lackluster performance but no guys i gotta admit this was the complete opposite of what i was expecting i got really sucked into her character i won't explain exactly what some of her background is because it is something that i don't think is explained in the trailer but it does lend to the job that she does have which is an fbi agent in solving these crimes i think it's a very very interesting backstory especially with her specifically as she does have a little tie into this investigation at hand but there are a lot of moments in this film where we get to see the anxiety just the stress of the job of some of these situations that she does encounter once again as an fbi agent i can only imagine you're in the field we get to see a lot of day in the life stuff that she goes through that is horrific all right now let's jump to her boss agent carter played by blair underwood now i know i've seen this guy before in a lot of films growing up i think he usually played like kind of a side character or cameo role but i think in this film he does get a lot of good screen time as we kind of see that once again he is her boss this case following long legs is pretty cold until lee harker comes into the mix and he is very inviting to her a very authoritative mentor type of teacher and you really feel a good Good partnership between the two. Now, Alicia Witt playing Ruth Harker, the mother of Makeham and Rose character. I don't know if she was in the trailer, but I definitely remember her growing up in the 90s with such films like Urban Legend. It was a little interesting as she's not that much older than me. I believe she's only about 10 years older, yet she plays an older mother in this film. And when she was on screen, I didn't see a single line feature on her face. They kind of really did her up with the makeup. And it is really distracting to see young mothers sometimes. And when I'm saying young, I'm talking about like early 60s, because I can only assume that maybe Makeup Monroe's character is late 20s, early 30s. I don't know. But the point I'm trying to make is that the character of Ruth Harker does look really young herself. Damn, the scenes that had her her in it oh my gosh i was actually really sucked into this character's back lore of what ends up happening especially in the third act and the reason that a lot of you guys are here nicholas cage playing long legs and that's pretty evident from the first kind of couple of minutes that we get on screen with his character now i'll be the first to admit it i am not the biggest hardcore nicholas cage fan i like some of his films I don't like some of his films. I'm very just kind of neutral, but I can understand the fandom for all of the crazy freakouts that he goes through. But do I think that's necessarily a good thing? No, it's just something that you're known for, just going over the top. I don't think that necessarily makes you a groundbreaking actor, because I will say this, and I've said it before, I think Nick Cage is a great actor in a lot of bad movies. This is not one of those bad movies. So he does an over-the-top performance, of course, as this Long Legs character, which in the moment, I could only imagine Tiny Tim. Y'all remember Tiny Tim? I just barely found out about him a couple of years ago. So when I was seeing videos of Tiny Tim, I could only imagine that this was some of the inspiration for this character, Long Legs. Not just the look, but the sound. He's constantly singing and just giving these riddles or, or, or just very, very creepy nature stuff. Now, one dislike about his character 
was the look. Because through the early stages of this film, you don't get to see his face full on. You get to see side views or just kind of a cropped from the mouth down shot. And it really allows the audience to just kind of soak of what this creepy creature could look like or <laughs> creepy character, I should say. He is a creature though. I, I <laughs> Yeah, he is a demonic creature. And when we finally get to see what he looks like, I felt like they added so much prosthetics and a weird kind of uh, color pigment to his face in general that was really a little off-putting because in scenes that were supposed to be serious, I was almost laughing. But once again, that's not to say that the performance was bad at all. I just think that the style choice of the face, once again, was not to my liking. Okay, now let's get to the story of long legs of what i thought about this film story i do like movies that were set you know in the 90s which this film is but even other crime movies that i saw in the 90s like a seven i mean you had this grit this grime to it right and you also had to feel like you were in the 90s with all the aesthetic yeah they show pictures of clinton and like a thousand shots with blur underwood by the way <laughs> to let you know hey we're in the 90s buddy and a lot of the color tones and the real dull just neutral costume designs that they had to wear felt like you were in a small fargo type of town also it is an eerie feeling to know that before technology before social media people were going missing left and right so much easier man just because you didn't have big brother eye in the sky watching every single movement you couldn't be tracked 24 7 so sometimes these missing people or missing cases or killings in general when you had a serial killer happening wouldn't get solved until years later or not at all i really did get that sense of dread once again that this person or that this thing responsible was a menace was a force to be reckoned with and you definitely feel that in the third act there's a lot of angst there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of anxiety once again with the buildup of not knowing why these killings are happening or some of the people involved with the killings but overall i had a really fun time and i know that's weird to say it was a grim time it was disgusting i mean you saw some things a lot of deaths a lot of child deaths a lot of taboo type of topics that isn't really your day-to-day -day conversation with somebody would enjoy all right now i know i said earlier in this review that this is the most talked about horror movie online up until its release as it was dubbed with the tagline the scariest horror movie of all time is it the scariest movie of all time you ask no and i think you probably could have answered that yourself i mean horror thriller suspense it's all subjective i will say when you are talking about real nature stuff like serial killings happening especially when they're done to children or families can be extremely scary and scarier than most of the slashers that i watch or grew up on as these are real things these are real people that are happening these are possible people that you could be living right next door to and you would never ever know it so i guess in that sense yeah it is the scariest thing ever but even with things like the ominous score that really lent to this movie, oh my god, some of these tracking shots of just zooming in, panning to the left, really just showing a lot of isolation from the woods or wherever location that Maka Monroe's character was at. You also see a lot of demonic imagery. So if you guys are not cool with that, that's all you're gonna see in this movie as it does have a lot of occult and satanic stuff behind it. A lot of things that go bump in the night, so to speak. So. Yeah, if you guys are scared by that type of stuff, this may be the scariest movie of all time for you. One thing that I will mention though, is this movie is very drawn out and slow. Now, before you say, David, you think the movie's boring? No, I think this movie's actually very interesting. I think to the average moviegoer though, that's not expecting that, they may fall asleep on the couch and just kind of wake up every jump scare that happens. Perfect example, I had a young couple sitting next to me. I think maybe 10 or 15 minutes into this movie, they kind of looked at each other and didn't think that this was the perfect date movie to go on. But all in all, I had a really good time once again with Long Legs because I think it's a very interesting, original type of movie with a crazy, creepy character like a Long Legs with a good backstory. The third act of this movie, once again, is gonna be what's talked about for years to come. I can guarantee it. You do leave with a sense of dread by the time the credits roll. You do feel uneasy. You are looking over your shoulder as you're walking to your car back home. I think this movie really did its job with all the cinematic and stylistic choices to create a creepy atmosphere. So all that being said, I'm gonna give 2024's Long Legs a solid four out of five. All right, Flix Talkers, what did you think of Long Legs? 
Briggs. Please let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. What is your rating out of five for this film? I would love to hear it. And if you guys did appreciate mine, please hit that big thumbs up and consider subscribing today for more. All right, Flix Talkers, I'll catch you on the next one. I'm gone. Peace.